Hello, my name is Anthony Smith and I'm a member of the West Midlands technical team and I will be providing an insight into the sustainable operations at our new site in Birmingham. This will include the history of the site, what it can deliver to the local area and how carbon footprint is reduced in the delivery and the production of its materials. Located on an old railway sidings, construction started in October 2019 for Tarmac's new asphalt and aggregate depot in Birmingham, which opened in April of this year. The site is home to a state-of-the-art asphalt plant, which is in an excellent location, close to the city centre and confluence of the M6 and M42, with great links to the West Midlands and beyond. The following is a time-lapse film showing the construction of the site. The site supplies aggregates and asphalt and later this year a ready mix concrete plant will open which will support HS2 construction as well as the Birmingham market. The vast majority of aggregates that are used on the site are bought in via rail. Aggregates are loaded at the quarry and brought to site where bottom discharge rail wagons feed the conveyors which direct the aggregate into one of the 14 2000 ton storage bays. The site has the capability to unload a train with 1,800 tonnes of aggregate in under two hours. A train carrying that much aggregate is the equivalent of taking 60 wagons off the road. Not only does this vastly reduce vehicle movements and subsequently traffic in the inner city area, but it also reduces carbon emissions too. The trains use hydro-treated vegetable oil or HVOs which can eliminate up to 90% of carbon dioxide emissions. Once the aggregates have been unloaded, they are either sold directly to the construction market or they are utilised at the state-of-the-art asphalt plant, which is also on the site. The high thermal insulation standard on the plant leads to lower fuel consumption. The asphalt plant has the capability to produce conventional asphalt materials, such as asphalt concretes, SMAs and hot rolled asphalts. We can also produce a wide range of Tarmac's ultimate proprietary asphalt solutions as well. Conveyors send the aggregates directly from the 2000 tonne bays into the asphalt plant, minimising plant vehicle movements and reducing dust. Material travels via rail into the asphalt plant and has no human intervention until it is laid on the road. The following animation shows how the asphalt plant operates. Generally, asphalt consists of three components. Firstly, minerals, which are different aggregates. Secondly, filler, meaning stone dust. And lastly, bitumen, which is used as a binder. The amount and relation of every component depends on the asphalt recipe. To ensure an homogeneous mixture of all components, a suitable preparation is essential. Mineral is the first component. Let's look into our cold feed system first. Here, the minerals are stored. The different aggregates are grouped by size and shape conformity in hoppers.
Next, the minerals are dried and heated in the dryer drum. Then, the elevator transfers the mineral to the highest point of the mixing tower. The material slides through a chute onto the screen machine, which separates the aggregates into different sizes. They are then stored in the hot bin section and available for further processes. The mineral is ready to be used. The second asphalt component is the so-called filler. The filler is stored in filler silos and available for the mixing process. The filler is also ready to be used. Let's have a look at the last component, bitumen. The bitumen is delivered at 160 degrees C and stored in preheated bitumen tanks to maintain the temperature. In general, asphalt mixing plants consist of several bitumen tanks in order to be able to provide recipe-related mixtures. These bitumen-filled tanks are used to supply the mixing process. The bitumen is now ready. It is transferred through a pipeline to a scale within the mixing section. The complete raw materials are now available and may be weighed and mixed. According to the chosen recipe, the preset mineral amount drops from the hot bit section into the mineral scale. Simultaneously, the filler is transported from the filler silo into the filler scale. The same applies to the bitumen. The bitumen is directly transferred from the bitumen tank to the scale. All components drop from the scales into the mixer. Mineral first, followed by the filler and lastly, the bitumen. The mixing cycle lasts up to 45 seconds. Subsequently, an homogeneous mixture of asphalt is ready for use. The asphalt is stored in hot storage silos until it's required. From there, it's loaded onto trucks and may be delivered to construction sites all over the country. The plant is ideally located on the key motorway network, so travel and carbon emissions are reduced, subsequently improving customer service as well. The asphalt plant has the capability to produce a wide range of sustainable asphalt solutions, including Tarmac's ultra-low range of warm mix asphalt. Material is produced at up to 40 degrees below conventional material temperatures. This typically reduces the carbon footprint of the material produced by up to 15% without detriment to the finished product. Additional benefits are improved workability, earlier reopening to traffic, which leads to improved productivity and less disruption. Also at the site, rubber modified asphalt can be produced. Despite recycling then used tyres in the UK, 150,000 tonnes of tyre rubber is exported each year to North Africa and the Indian subcontinent. 
Birmingham Asphalt will have the capability to recycle end-use tyres in asphalt that otherwise would have been exported, providing a sustainable solution which also provides a carbon footprint saving of around 8%. The range of rubber modified products includes conventional SMAs, which perform as their equivalent, as well as the BBA accredited Multipay R. Birmingham Asphalt also has the capability of recycling asphalt in a wide range of asphalt products. This not only reduces virgin raw materials um, required to make the product, but also reduces the carbon footprint of the finished product too. I spoke with Delroy Amaroy who works for Arcadis in Birmingham. Dell has worked for Birmingham for 36 years on various high profile schemes in the city. I asked him what impact the new asphalt plant will have on the city with regards to these sustainable materials. Um, well, I feel, I think that we, I mean, we are working closely with, with Tarmac at the moment with regards to uh, coming up with some um, recycled foam um, materials Mainly for the with the for the with the use of tar bound planings, uh, and what we what we're actually what we're actually working closely with Tarmac is we're providing um, a foam master which has got tar bound planings to use uh, as a binder course as when we actually do our footway reconstruction works, and also which is called foam master foam master B, and we're also got a, another. To, um, one of um, foam master material, which we use in the carriageways, which is called foam master A. So we're actually using all of the tar bound planings that we're planning off the actual network, the Birmingham network, because there are there is an abundance of contaminated carcinogenic planings on on um, on the network. We're actually using that to actually reconstruct um, the footways and the carriageways within the Birmingham region. So we are actually taking those that initiative on board at the moment. OK, um, and then with regards to the uh, non tar bound planings as well, um, obviously we'll, we'll look to utilise that in asphalt as well for yourselves going forward. So yeah. will that be a benefit knowing that the, the, the asphalt that you're laying will contain um, recycled material as well? Again, yeah, absolutely. As part again from Birmingham, as part of their their initiatives to reduce carbon, we we have been <clears throat> we have been proactive in in um, re trying to reduce carbon footprint and and trying to in engage in all of these um, initiatives in terms of using these types of um, recyclable, sustainable materials. Um, again, a lot of them. We've we've used over the last. Um, I, I was initially on the Birmingham PFI working for another company, and we did work closely with with Tarmac to try and introduce these types these types of materials. Okay, brilliant. Um, and then with your um, carbon um, footprint sort of savings that you, you're striving towards, um, warm mix asphalt is is one that uh, with the Birmingham asphalt plant there. Um, how does that fit into your vision of um, materials onto the network? Well, at, well, at the moment, we're working, we're working on working on the IWP. We have introduced schemes where we've where we've specified warm mixed asphalts in in the lower layers of the carriage rail resurfacing, um, and we've also used other other types of products from tarmac type products like the single layer material, um, ultifast paved within in the footways. Uh, we've we starting to introduce the uses of sami layer stress absorbing layers, uh, which will ultimately reduce reflective cracking. Uh, we've got ultra thin layers uh, on existing concrete roads because there's an abundance of concrete roads within the Birmingham network. So if we use these ultra thin layers, it will reduce the coal milling process, and we we sort of more, move more onto using like doing overlays. Uh, and again, what we, we mentioned earlier, the the tarban tar planning foam master. Uh, yeah. I think that is that is one of the one of the um, key drivers in terms of um, contaminated contaminated materials um, tar, because that's something yeah. that we we've got an issue, an issue with getting rid of. Okay, oh, that's brilliant. Thank you. Um, I guess ultimately the the location of the plant itself will help for supply purposes as well, and all the you know, delays that can be seen on site due to material traveling from um, slightly further afield that I, I guess that reduces the risk and, and yeah. gives you a better 
position to get the materials down quicker and, and again lay. yeah i mean because it because of where it is it's not near enough in the center of birmingham i mean localized deliveries would 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 have would be a benefit because you'd have the optimum temperature lane temperature condition temperatures when the actual materials arrives on site um and the actual one of the issues that we've got uh, i mean at the moment we've got quite a lot of work going on in the city uh and availability of material is is something that is 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 becoming quite quite becoming an issue getting the material quick enough because everybody we've got lots of different um projects going on at the minute we've got the, we've got the hs2 we've got the commonwealth games we've got the routine normal maintenance but if we had this sort of plant central it would be easy for delivery optimum temperature t um temperatures for laying and, and things like that so yeah it'd be absolutely fine that'd be that'd be it's a really good idea Ah, perfect. Um, you just touched upon HS2 there. On the, on the site itself, there, there's a ready mix plant that's opening later this year as well. Um, yeah. So it's it's quite a large site where um, the aggregates get railed in as well, which I mentioned earlier. Obviously, that reduces vehicle movements on the road um, around Birmingham. But then the ready mix plant will will be very local to the centre to support HS2, but also the the inner city work as well. Yeah. <laughs> OK, um, thanks for your time today, Del. Um, really appreciate uh, your input into the questions. No problem. Thank you for joining this session. The following film shows you the Birmingham Ashford and Aggregate site in action. Mm -hmm.